The Bolsheviks waged war in Ukraine after the Central Rada of Ukraine responded to Lenin's ultimatum with its fourth universal. The document was a declaration of independence of Ukraine. Is the Rada ready to stop all attempts to disarm Soviet regiments and the Red Guard in Ukraine and to immediately return weapons to those from whom it was taken? In case a satisfactory answer doesn't come within 48 hours, the Council of People's Commissars will consider the Rada to be in a state of war with the Soviet government. By mid-January 1918, the Bolsheviks occupied Kharkiv, Poltava and Katerinoslav, along with vital railway hubs of Lozova, Pavlograd and Sinelnikov. They also established strongholds in the south, in Kherson, Mykolaiv and Odessa. Two armies of Bolsheviks moving from Kharkiv and Gomel approached Kiev. After a battle in Bakhmach, the army of the Ukrainian National Republic had to retreat to Kruta railway station, 130 kilometers north of the Ukrainian capital. Facing this danger, the government made a desperate call for everyone who still has a scintilla of hope remaining in their hearts, those who didn't give up in helplessness, and the youth was quick to respond to this call to defend their native land. On the 25th of January 1918, a train with volunteers, students of Kyiv St. Volodymyr University and the Polytechnic Institute, departed towards Kruti, where they joined the students of the Youth Military School and Free Cossack Fighters, around 600 men in total. On the night of January the 26th to 27th, I talked on the telephone with Moravyov. His demand in the form of an order sounded like this. Prepare to meet the victorious Red Guard. Prepare lunch. I forgive Junker's mistakes, but I will shoot at the officers anyway. I replied, everything is ready for the meeting. This plan of situation of forces near the station Kruti was drawn by student Mykola Olinik, who fought in the battle. A joint Bolshevik army of Moravyov was moving in from Bakhmach. Different estimates put its numbers between 4 and 6,000. The battle began around 9 a.m. and continued until dusk. We discovered that the enemy had two well-constructed armoured trains, a howitzer battery, up to a thousand infantry soldiers and up to 1,500 Baltic sailors. The Tarashevchenko unit remained in the rear. It was tasked with supporting the UNR forces near Nizhin, but later decided to side with the Soviet regime. The volunteers in Kruti were ordered to retreat. The boys' commanders passed on an order to retreat, but somewhere on the way it was mixed up and the student platoon heard that they should attack. The Bolsheviks captured 27 soldiers of the student unit. <laughs> All the captured were brutally killed. Their heads were smashed, their teeth were knocked out, their eyes were gouged out. Several bodies could not be identified as they were disfigured. The Battle of Kruti delayed the Bolshevik offensive on Ukraine's capital by several days. This allowed the government in Kiev to sign the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk and declare independence, which was recognized by all World War I parties. On the 1st of March 1918, the Bolsheviks left Kiev. Three weeks later, the remains of those who perished defending Ukraine in Kruti were reburied in Kiev. <laughs>